Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. I'm going casual today. Uh, my office got me this very nice vest for the cold weather. The most important thing is it has what I am on it because I sometimes forget who I am. So I can always look down and know who I am. Uh, so a, lo a lot going on, uh, mostly the comedies out of uh, uh, D.C., but I want to first catch everybody up with what's going on in the middle of influenza season because it's really, it's hot. I think we've actually kind of peaked. If you look at the wastewater data, influenza A, very high all over the country. Uh, but the good news is it's beginning to trend down. So if you look at the clinical lab positivity for influenza is beginning to trend down very high, 25%. But trending down, outpatient respiratory illness is also high. Seven percent are due to flu, but it's trending down. Uh, usually, what happens is as the, in, the front end of the infections begins to decline, people who get complications like hospitalizations begins to go up a little bit later, and that's what's happening. Uh, there's been the weekly hospitalization rate per hundred thousand is trending upward. There have been thirty-nine thousand, almost forty thousand people admitted to. Uh, the hospitals with influenza, influenza this past week. So you can see like the country is right in the middle of all this influenza. There's, a, and again, a late indicator, 2% of the deaths are attributed to influenza in hospitals. That's uh, a trending upward. And there have been eight influenza associated deaths uh, reported this week in children for a total of 17 this season. And again, you know, it's sad, almost all of those are unvaccinated. So as I mentioned, if you look at the, all the respiratory viruses, influenza is really peaking now, but it's beginning to decline. And so I, I hope we will not see that double peak like it happened last year. Last year, I showed the data la last week that there was a second peak sort of in February, and I hopefully we'll just see a decline. But that said, this is the time when COVID begins to go. So <laughs> we're done with flu. Hopefully we're being, start seeing the waning of flu. But if you look at wastewater for SARS-CoV-2, it's going up all over the country, and so is RSV. So those are trending up. If you look at the COVID surveillance data, again, the early indicators are test positivity, 5% going up, emergency room visits going up, and uh, if you look at hospitalization rates, they're also going up as, long as, as well as uh, deaths attributed to COVID. So that's what's going on in the, in the season, in the respiratory virus season. Flu has peaked, hopefully it'll begin to come down. COVID will start emerging in February. So hopefully you've got your influenza shot uh, at this point. I hope you still should get it if you haven't had one. And COVID, if you haven't had one in the last six months, it'd probably be a good idea to get a booster. All right, now for the, for the best stuff of the week. I, 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 I'm first gonna apologize to all the nutritionists in the world because I am not a nutritionist. And, and I'm, I'm stuck because like everybody in the country, we're, we're, you know, we, we rely on uh, recommendations from authority figures and authorities like uh, Health and Human Services, but you know, what we're getting is a comedy. So uh, I was thinking about my favorite comedy shows. Uh, for me, it was Veep, but I, the Europeans love Big Bang Theory. Have you, know, have you noticed that? It's a big thing. All my Italian friends watch Big Bang Theory all the time. Office, Seinfeld, Curb, you know, you pick your own, but for me, it's HHS. That is the weekly humor show. <laughs> I'm loving this series. So I was trying to figure out the dietary guidelines and I, I, they flipped the pyramid upside down and they, you know, I'm not even, well, this must be like, this is what I eat as the recommendations, not like there's any evidence base for this. But now we got steaks and cheese and beef tallow is on there, on there and uh, whole milk again, so. So I thought it might be useful, because so many people are asking me what I think about this. I thought it'd be useful to sort of look at the evidence-based recommendations, which is what's supposed to come out of DC, but it's not, so I have to do it. So let's look at what would we, how do you decide what's a reasonable you know, diet to follow? And what we should prioritize are studies that are randomized trials that have actual hard outcomes. So what's a hard outcome? Hard outcome is like a cardiovascular event. Uh, like you have a heart attack or stroke or diabetes or mortality, those are hard outcome events. Intermediate ones are like your blood pressure is controlled, your lipids are better controlled, maybe you know, like hemoglobin A1C is better controlled. And of course the best evidence is if you have a randomized uh, controlled trial. Less good, as we've talked a lot about this, is a large association studies, population studies. Uh, those can't prove cause and effect, they just sort of sug make suggestions that there might be a relationship. And then if you but bunch of, put a bunch of those studies together in a meta-analysis, it's, it's, it's even better. So those are the ways you have to judge the data. So what are the really strong evidence for dietary? 
what kind of diet you should you have. So the best evidence is actually the Mediterranean style diet. They are actually randomized controlled trials uh, that showed that you got fewer outcomes, major cardiovascular outcomes, so hard outcomes in a randomized trial using the Mediter Mediterranean diet, which we'll talk about that, but it's lot, not red meat. It's more, more fish and, 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 and olive oils and stuff like that. Uh, the DASH style diet was also a randomized controlled trial that showed large blood pressure reductions in diets that had low fats, uh, low dairy fats, so low fat, not whole milk, but low fat milk, and low saturated fat. There was one study, uh, also was a randomized controlled trial, looking at plant-based studies, specifically giving things that compete with uh, cholesterol absorption. And they have shown uh, it, an intermediate uh, designation, like a, you know, lowering LDL uh, through, through those diets. And then there's been a, a, a couple of studies that were called plant forward, where you look at your plate when you serve it, and half of it should be vegetables. That has been associated with lower diabetes risk. Okay, so that's, that, those, are the, those are the real studies. That should, those studies should, should serve as the basis of how we all eat. So I thought I'd just show you some of them. Uh, this is the, uh, one of the best known trials that was done in Spain. Over 7,500 people were followed for five years. And this was a Mediterranean diet with a lot of olive oil, a Mediterranean diet with more nuts and berries and stuff. Control diet versus uh, Mediterranean diet and, and, and major cardiovascular events were reduced by 30%. That is evidence-based. That is a good recommendation. So most people now would recommend a Mediterranean-style diet, not, not meat and beef tallow. Uh, <laughs> you can't make it up. Then there's the DASH diet. Okay, the DASH diet was really interesting. That was another randomized control trial. It was done in the, in the uh, New England, published in the New England Journal. And that compared three different types of diets. And the way it was done was a metabolic feeding study. So people actually went in as pa inpatients and got all their food done, so they knew what the, what the meals were. And there was a typical American diet. Uh, the, the, then there was one that was fruits and vegetables diet and then the DASH diet. And the DASH diet was basically low-fat dairy. So again, you know, why are we recommending whole milk again? Low-fat dairy, lean protein is, so such as fish and chicken, no red meat. And it li specifically limited saturated red, red meat, uh, saturated fats and red meat. So the key takeaways was there was significant blood pressure reduction uh, in, with, that was comparable almost to in, uh, drug treatments, monotherapy treatment. It was seen within two weeks. It was across sex, race, uh, sex, race and age groups. And it improved lipid profile. So there, another good study was the DASH diet that did that. Did that. There's been one other study called the Portfolio Diet, which is high in plants that have sterols that compete with cholesterol reabsorption. This is a funny graph because it actually shows percent of reduction increasing. So increasing is better. It means it's more reduced. That's kind of silly the way they did it. But the Portfolio Diet was significantly better than a control diet. And so the Portfolio Diet was, was mo mostly plant sterols, uh, so uh, oats, barley, soy, things like that. And it had the same reduction in LDL uh, as taking a statin. So there's, again, that's sort of why people say push more vegetables, you know, in, in, your, in your diet. Uh, so the plant-forward diet has also been, this is one where you take half of the plate and have it filled with vegetables instead of other protein. Uh, and it's, that diet has also been shown to improve things like uh, diabetes control. There, a lot of people have done the, I, I say this all the time, you know, partial starvation, you basically, you know, stay 16 hours and starve and, eight, and then you eat in an eight hour window. Uh, that has not been shown to be any better than any sort of calorie restriction. So uh, all those fad things about, you know, intermittent starvation, it's just calorie restriction. So calorie restriction is important if you want to lose, lose weight. So, you know, when you add it all together, <clears throat> you sort of go like, well, what are they, what is this recommendation? I mean, there's almost, almost no really, it's not a lot of data to support, but let's, let's take it for what it is. The recommendation is uh, prioritize high quality, nutrient dense protein foods in every meal. So this is saying you should have a lot of protein, red meats, eggs, uh, I won't even bother. So, let, so let's take it for what it is. Uh, one of the guidelines advises people to eat more whole foods or real foods I totally agree with that. If, if you can't understand what's on the side of the label off a package, then you probably shouldn't eat it. I mean, I think that's a reasonable recommendation. That came out of HHS, okay. 
Uh, they also recommended that you not eat a lot of heavily processed foods. I'm good with that, too. I mean, heavily processed foods have a lot of salt and calories, so okay. The new guidelines also suggest that you should have introduce uh, more allergen types of foods to kids when they're young, such as peanuts and wheat and eggs, shellfish. That's probably a good idea. I think that's reasonable, and the, and the reason for that is what's happened over time is, is, is we have not exposed children to those things. Almost 8% of children's not, children now have food allergies. And so, you know, that was also in the older guidelines, nothing new, but it, it emphasized it again. That's probably re reasonable. Uh, as for the full fat dairy, that there is absolutely nothing to support that. Uh, and for years, many of the diets have included reduced dairy fat. So I, I think that's not only not evidence-based, it's probably wrong. Uh, and then, you know, so I mean, if you really wanted to eat, drink whole milk, that's up to you. But I, that's, again, there's no data to support it. And then the most controversial thing, of course, is the type of protein. This was a recommendation that we double the amount of protein. You know, the benefits for protein are mostly in people who are doing isotonic uh, weightlifting or isotonic exercise. Because as you, as you exercise uh, isotonically, in other words, you know, lifting weights and stuff like that, your muscles contract and they actually have formed little uh, tears in the muscle that have to be rebuilt, and that's, that's why muscles get bigger. And for people who are doing a lot of that, you know, a lot of isotonic work, then they probably should increase their protein level. But doubling the amount of protein in the diet is only going to increase the caloric content because in the recommendations, they didn't say replace other things with protein, they just said double protein. So frankly, I found the recommendations almost uninterpretable and not particularly accurate. Also, they said no sugar for kids uh, between uh, ages 2 and 10. Good luck with that. No cookies, no birthday cake. I mean, come on. Beef tallow? I don't even know where that came from. Anyway, okay. I guess we're going to have to figure this out on ourselves because we're not getting good guidance from the, the federal government. All right, I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, congratulations to Susan Rosenberg, Professor of Molecular uh, and Human Genetics, and a number of other departments. She's like in three different departments. She's been named the recipient of the 2026 Hill Prize in Biologic Sciences from the Texas Academy of Medicine, Engineering, Science, and Technology. Uh, this is funded by Linda Hill Philanthropies and recognizes high risk, high reward science. Uh, and she's really a terrific scientist. She received a $500,000 grant for her groundbreaking strategy to combat uh, antibiotic resistance. I also want to do a shout out for Hong Ji Lee, Assistant Professor of Molecular and Human Genetics, who's now uh, one of the new investigator awardees in aging biology and, ge and geroscience research from the Evolution Foundation, American Federation for Aging Research. And this program provides a three-year award to support junior faculty uh, in research on, on aging. And of course, ball is out. It's picked up by the Texans and Sheldon Rankins, and he is in for a touchdown. We're very happy that our Houston Texans managed to win uh, their playoff. Uh, it actually, crushed them, uh, and I think it's all because uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback doesn't believe in vaccines. That's 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 what I'm saying. And, and I have one final shout out. That's to our own Claire Bassett, who received the. Distinguished Service Award from the AAMC GIA, which is a group on institutional advancement. Uh, these, all these videos, it's all her idea she does. She's brilliant and fabulous in communications. We love her and we're so glad that she got recognized by the GIA. Anyway, congratulations to you, Claire, and have a wonderful weekend. Go Texans, and I can't wait to see you next week.